On today's Winning Cures Everything, oh, it's time to dive in. That's right, week five, picks and predictions. I'm going through 20 games today, so let's not waste time. Let's jump into it. Can you believe it? It's football. I've been watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. Welcome in. Winning Cures Everything. I'm your host, Gary Seegers. You can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at GaryWCE. Uh, you can also follow me at Gary WCE on Telegram if you want to get my picks and whatnot throughout the week, any kind of news that I get. And if you feel like supporting the show, go to buymeacoffee.com slash winning cures. That is the easiest way to do it. Uh, I am on TikTok, not TikTok. I am on Twitter right now at winning cures. Go ahead and check it out. I would certainly appreciate it. That, uh, that helps me out significantly. Uh, so we've got a lot to discuss today. Um, but first, let me tell you, the BetUS College Football Show, every Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, all of my official plays are over there. Those are my official picks for the week, uh, along with all of the other games that are going on this week, right? I'm, these games that I go through here are the ones that we did not hit on that show. So I, I am basically going to go in, I'm going to show you my model, I'm going to tell you what my pick on the game would be, my lean, my prediction, uh, and we'll do a little bit of analysis, but nothing crazy, right? These are all very brief. So let's go ahead and, oh, also, Three Dog Thursday, every Thursday, right here on the Winning Cures Everything YouTube channel. Uh, you can also find the Three Dog Thursday podcast as well. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, let me tell you first, the season record thus far on these picks on this show, 40 and 37. Now, again, these are not my best bets, but 40 and 37 on this show. I am 13, 8, and 1 last uh, last week, week four. So, uh, with that said, without further ado, let's start off here. Penn State heads to Northwestern on Saturday morning, 11 a.m. Central Time, God's Time Zone, on the Big Ten Network. Penn State, a 27-point favorite with a total of 46 and let's go on and pull it up here. Uh, my number has Penn State by 28.52. My power number has Penn State by a little uh, around 29 and a half or so. Uh, you look at this and you'll see a whole lot of red on Northwestern side and a whole lot of green on Penn State side. What Northwestern did against Minnesota last week looked completely different. I, I will tell you, uh, shout out to the guys from the Westlot Pirates. Go and listen to their podcast, the Big Ten podcast, but mostly Northwestern focused uh, they talked about how David Braun aggressively changes things on the fly, right? He adapts to what is happening in the game. He analyzes the situation. I, I'm impressed with what Northwestern is doing thus far. But uh, I don't know that they've got the dudes to be able to hang with, uh, with Penn State. Penn State's one of the best teams in the country right now. Now, as far as passing the ball, not great. Number 131 in passing explosiveness. Uh, they are number 69 in PPA per pass, but they are number 27 in passing success rate when Penn State has the ball, uh, which you can see right here. And actually, we'll put it on the screen just like that so that you can see uh, exactly what's on my sheet here. Uh, the five factors rank, I mean, Penn State is smoking everybody, basically. Uh, number one in raw five factors, uh, number two in five factors plus talent. Yeah. Uh, I look at this, and I just I don't see a lot of spots. And this is a, a spot where I think Penn State's passing game can kind of get right uh, because Northwestern, number 116 PPA per pass allowed. Uh, they are number 122 in passing success rate allowed, number 122 in passing explosiveness allowed. Penn State is not explosive, but, man, are they efficient. Number three in net points per drive. Uh, they are number 14 in available yards margin. They are number three in defensive success rate, but number 28 in offensive success rate. You look at Northwestern, I mean, what, here's the difference, right? PPA margin, number 104, and Penn State, number 28. And then you get into the intangibles, right? Turnover margin, Penn State's number one. Northwestern is number 68. Penalties per game, both are top 25. Uh, this, if I have to go a certain way, I know Penn State is on the road, and I know that Northwestern had a lot of hype last week. Not hype, but felt good about themselves after that. I'm I'm going to ride 
with Penn State to cover the 27 here. Uh, I don't think it's a look-ahead spot. I think that this is a spot where Penn State wants to go on the road and they want to get to feeling good about themselves. Their offense, I think, is going to be clicking. Give me Penn State uh, to cover the 27 on the road at Northwestern. Next up, Texas A&M and Arkansas. They are on uh, SEC Network at 11 a.m. Central Time. Texas A&M a six and a half point favorite, total of fifty three and a half. This one taking place over at Jerry World, and we will pull it up on the screen here for you, so you can see what I'm looking at. Uh, power rating: I've got A&M by a little over four points, uh, but as far as the spread is concerned, uh, I make this game five and a half. Right, so if it's sitting at six and a half, I've got it at five and a half. Uh, Arkansas has two losses on the season. But, man, their offense looks pretty good. The defense is okay. Uh, Both of these teams not good in penalties per game. You can see it on the screen there. Uh, Number 127 for Arkansas, number 117 for Texas A&M. I just, uh, Arkansas doesn't turn the ball over as much as A&M does, right? And and A&M doesn't even turn it over that much. It's just they get zero takeaways. So, if Arkansas typically... uh, they lost the game against BYU by having two turnovers, right? That turned into points. Uh, here, Texas A&M is number 120 in takeaways per game. That's uh, I don't know that that's going to cut it. Uh, neither team very explosive. Uh, or, or how about this? A&M is explosive on offense, number 32, but they are just as bad at giving up explosive plays, number 117 on defense. So, number 86 net explosives there. Arkansas, number 105. They're not great at creating them. They're not great at uh, at defending them either. So, uh, there's no massive advantage for either team here. This game is always close. Always close. And I had somebody on the BetUS show saying that Gary always fades Texas A&M. But, yeah, have they given you any reason to back them? And my answer to that would be no. Connor Wigman is out here. I do like Max Johnson quite a bit. Uh, but I don't know that he's enough to be able to pull away and get like good margin here. Uh, I'm going to take Arkansas. I, I think I think Arkansas is the right side. I don't know that they win the game. But I think they certainly keep it close because, I mean, they always do. And I'll pull up the, uh, the sheet so that if you want to pause the screen, you can do that. And, uh, and that way you can course, check it out. You can do what you want to with it. So yes, give me Arkansas plus six and a half on this one. Okay, now we move to the Big Ten and Louisiana heads to Minnesota. Non-conference game in week five. I get it. Uh, Minnesota an 11 point favorite, total of 49 on this one. It's 11 a.m. on the Big Ten Network our Big Ten Network alternate or whatever, because I think the main Big Ten Network is going to be showing Penn State. Uh, But regardless, Minnesota coming off just a heartbreaking loss last week at Northwestern. They were up by three touchdowns heading into the fourth quarter and just could not get stops against Ben Bryant. Well, now Louisiana comes in, and Louisiana not as good as Northwestern, you would think. But you look at these numbers. Power rating, I've got Minnesota by 4.43. Just based on raw statistics, uh, yeah, well, how about this, opponent-adjusted statistics. I've got Minnesota barely better than a pick em. Like, this is this is wild. Uh, the team's strength it certainly favors Minnesota, uh, but their numbers have not been good. Number 122 PPA per pass, number 65 PPA per rush, right? Uh, the running back, and I forget his name, Daniel something, I think, don't hold it against me, Minnesota fans. I'm sorry. I got a lot of games I'm going through. Uh, but I like the running back quite a bit, quite a bit. He looked great, but he didn't play the uh, towards the end of the Northwestern game uh, because he had some kind of hamstring issue, whatever. <sighs> okay, like that's not great. And then on defense, I mean, you look at what Louisiana does on offense here, uh, and we'll, we'll pull it up like this so that you can, of course, pause if you want to. Uh, that way you can see the sheet. PPA per rush, Louisiana's number four. Uh, they run the ball, you know, 50% of the time, very well balanced. They're number 10 in rushing success rate, number 31 in rushing explosiveness, uh, number 13 in offensive line yards, number 57 in stuff rate allowed. All of that is better than what Minnesota's defense does. 
I see a lot of advantages here. Uh, the uh, the biggest issue, of course, being turnover margin. If Louisiana gives the ball away, that's going to be an issue. They're number 121 in turnover margin, number 124 in giveaways per game. Minnesota, uh, number 20 in takeaways per game. So that's something to pay attention to. But, yeah, I mean, you look at points per scoring opportunity. Uh, Minnesota, once people get uh, a first down inside the 40, like, they can't stop people. And you look at Louisiana, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, they're number 113 in points per scoring opportunity. The issue is that Minnesota can't finish drives. They're number 110 in points per scoring opportunity on offense. Uh, field position, like, all the, the five factors rank heavily skews Louisiana's way here. I'll take the Raging Cajuns, plus the 11 here. Uh, I Minnesota does not look good right now. Uh, and they've got Michigan next week, a bit of a look-ahead spot, maybe. I, I don't know that you can look ahead when you just got to get right. So, uh, Louisiana has surprised me this year. I will take them to cover the 11 on the road with this one. Next up, UAB heads to Tulane. And... Tulane is a 21 and a half point favorite, a total of 59 on this one. It's 11 a.m. Central Time on ESPN2. And, you know, let's go ahead and pull it up. Let's put it on the screen so you can see what we're talking about. My numbers have Tulane power rated by 13.8 points, and the raw stats, or opponent adjusted stats, have Tulane by 14.23. I, I still have issues here because I don't think UAB is very good. However, Tulane is just not super efficient on offense. Michael Pratt it was great in that first game against South Alabama. Since then, like obviously he didn't play against Ole Miss, but it's not been good. Now, that's not to say that they can't score points on UAB's defense. I mean, look at this. Number 132 PPA per rush. Number 89 PPA per pass, but they're number 113 in passing success rate allowed. UAB's defense is number 126 PPA per drive allowed. That ain't going to cut it. But their offense can score points. They're number 30. So Trent Dilfer knows what he's doing on offense. They got no idea on defense. Like, no clue at all. And and still, I think 21 and a half points uh, is just a bit too much. Right, like Tulane put up 21 points on Southern Miss. Southern Miss's defense is terrible. Like, how about this? They're not terrible. They're just, they, Southern Miss only scored three points. But they give up explosives all the time. You look at the uh, the offensive explosiveness here, number 51 for Tulane, number 115 for UAB. But UAB's defense is better at stopping explosives. Eh, okay. Like, how about, or maybe not better at stopping explosives. How about teams just don't have to be super explosive on them? Uh, we'll go on and pull this up so that you can pause it if you want to look at all the rankings. Um, I think I'm going to go with UAB plus 21 and a half here. I don't think Tulane has any reason to to want to run up the score here. Uh, and I could, Maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. But just numbers-wise... UAB would seem to be the play. Uh, Tulane, a lot of hype and whatnot. They're getting ready to start conference play next week. I don't think that they are going to... Well, this is a conference game. How about that? Uh, I don't. I still don't see any reason for them to just completely run up the number here. And over three touchdowns for a team that is not very efficient on offense, that's kind of difficult. So, yeah, I will take, I will take UAB plus 21 and a half on that one. Uh, do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you've not already done that. Uh, the the race to 10,000 is on, so we would uh, we would certainly appreciate that. Okay, South Alabama heads to James Madison. James Madison, a three-point favorite, total of 49 on this one. It's 11 a.m. Central Time on ESPNU, and we'll pull up the numbers here. My numbers actually have South Alabama favored. South Alabama lost at home to Central Michigan last week. Now, their postgame win expectancy was like 65%. So, that's good, I suppose. But I I have trouble here. Uh, on defense, they're number 122 PPA per pass allowed. Uh, James Madison is number 28. But when you get into the efficiency situation, uh, 
passing success rate, James Madison is number 93. How they're up to number 28 in PPA per pass, they're number 19 in passing explosiveness. So, big-time plays, and I don't know that South Alabama is good at stopping those. They're number 90 in defensive explosiveness allowed, which will, there we go, you see it highlighted on the screen there. However, James Madison is not super explosive overall, number 98 in offensive explosiveness, uh, because, I mean, my gosh, they've got no rushing explosiveness, uh, which is the best thing that South Alabama does on defense. Number 55 PPA per rush, number 35 rushing success rate allowed, or excuse me, 34. Uh, I look at this, and I think that South Alabama can hit some explosive plays. They can. Uh, this, is a, this is a conference game. This should have been the... Not should have been. How about these are two teams that certainly could have been in the Sun Belt Championship last week? Excuse me, last year. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, they could have been in the championship game. Both of them were really, really good. James Madison should have been if, if it wasn't for that ridiculous rule. I, I see this. I see all these numbers, and I think I'm going to ride South Alabama again, even though. They haven't been super consistent. They haven't treated me well. But by God, I am going to, yeah, I think I'm going to ride South Alabama. Um, and, and we'll see if I look like a complete fool afterwards. But, that, yeah, that's that's the way that I'm going to have to do this. So, South Alabama, give me the Jaguars. I think Kane Womack is a, a really good coach. And Signetti, obviously, a really good coach. But I... I've got this South Alabama team winning the Sun Belt this year. That's the way I'm going to go with it. That's the way I'm going to go. Okay, we got our water. We're ready to go. Virginia heads to Boston College. And Boston College is a three-point favorite with a total of 53-and-a-half. This one's at 1 p.m. Central Time on the CW. And it's on the screen. I have Boston College by 6.46 points. Uh, power rated, I've got them by a little more than 5.5 points. All of this is more than the 3, which, by the way, is juiced at a couple of places at minus 125. So it's almost like they are begging you to take Virginia here. Um, I, I look at it. Virginia's defense is still a problem for me. Okay, Boston College, number 35 PPA per rush. They're, not, they're number 71 rushing success rate, uh, number 24 rushing explosiveness. And a lot of that has to do with uh, Thomas Castellano, right? The quarterback, he's really, really good at just kind of creating stuff on the fly. Against Virginia's defense, you're going to have plenty of opportunities. Virginia, number 126 PPA per rush, number 130 in rushing success rate, but they are number 43 in rushing explosiveness allowed. Uh, the issue is offensive line yards, Virginia number 125 in offensive line yards allowed. They're number 113 in stuff rate. And Boston College's off, or offensive line is actually pretty good. So, yeah, that, that's when Boston College has the ball. Now, on the other side, Boston College's defense is yuck. Uh, I, I like the, Cord it's not Cordero, but the, the new kid. Uh, and I've already forgotten the name. This is what happens when you try and do 20 different games at one time. Uh, Anthony, whatever his name is, for Virginia. Number 25 PPA per pass. Number 105 in passing success rate. Uh, number 104 in passing explosiveness. However, when you look at overall offensive explosiveness for Virginia, number 21. And they're number 25 in defensive explosiveness allowed overall. It Kind of wild. How this works, right? Like, how in the world do you get from 104 passing explosiveness and number 95 rushing explosiveness to being number 21 overall offensive explosiveness? It doesn't make any sense to me. But I've gone back through and looked at no, and that's the way it goes. Uh, Virginia, really explosive. Boston College can be on offense, but they're not great at stopping explosive plays. Um, Boston College better in turnover margin. Uh, Virginia better in penalties per game. I... This is, it feels coin flippy, but I'm going to take BC at home. These are two not great teams, but BC has the better line play. And so I will, I will roll with BC on this. Now, 
Let's see what we got. This is a big one. Michigan. Michigan at Nebraska. And Nebraska, a 17-point home underdog. Total of 39. 39 points. Uh, 2.30 p.m. Central Time on Fox. And, again, let's pull it up. Let's see what we got. My numbers love Michigan. The efficiency, all that. PPA margin, they are number three. Nebraska is number 57. I do think that the new quarterback at Nebraska, uh, just he doesn't make as many mistakes. Uh, are they going to try and do Jeff Sims here? I mean, I wouldn't. I would just see what you got with this kid. It, he's looked pretty good against Northern Illinois and uh, Louisiana Tech. Not great, but he didn't make the mistakes. And I think that's the biggest thing. Just don't make mistakes. Don't beat yourself. And you can hang in some of these games, uh, which is why I think the spread is 17 here as opposed to the 29 and a half that I've got. So, uh, or 29.05. Uh, my power numbers like uh, Michigan by 27.8. So right around four touchdowns. This is Michigan finally getting a challenge, right? They, they played Rutgers at home. Rutgers scored first, and then Michigan had 31 unanswered points and just kind of ran out the game. Uh, there's not going to be a ton of plays here. There's, it, it's there's it, when I look at this, I just see so many efficiency numbers for Michigan, and when I look at Nebraska, I just see problems all over the place. Now, defensive success rate for Nebraska is number 34, uh, number 57. Passing success rate allowed. Um, I, Michigan can pass the ball. They can run the ball. They can kind of do whatever they want to here. And I get the feeling that they will score a lot of points. So, let's take Michigan. Michigan minus, da, 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 minus the 17 on this. Uh, I'm going to pull it up on the screen in case you want to pause it to look at the numbers. And there you go. All right. Now, moving right along. Indiana heads to Maryland. And this one is at 2.30 p.m. Central Time on the Big Ten Network. Maryland, a 14-point favorite with a total of 50. And let's look. Maryland, I have by 21.67. Power rating, I've got them by 20.7. You always like it when those power numbers and the actual... Stat numbers are pretty close, so that's that's helpful. Maryland's strength of schedule, number 118. Indiana's number 14. Indiana has played Ohio State. They have played Louisville. Uh, they played Akron last week and got taken uh, taken for a ride. They won in, in four overtimes. Maryland has just been smoking teams, smoking them. Uh, but, again, it has a lot to do with who you've played, right? Offensive success rate, number 34 for Maryland. Uh Indiana, as much as we have talked about their defense, they are number 102 in defensive success rate allowed. That ain't great. Um, Maryland has a running game, surprisingly. Number 14 PPA per rush. Uh, number 20 rushing uh, explosiveness. And the issue is they don't run it that much, 45% of the time. Uh, passing the ball, which is Talia Tangavaloa's you know, biggest attribute, Number 54, PPA per pass. They're not super explosive in the pass game because they don't have to be. They're incredibly efficient. Number 38 in passing success rate. Let's look at when Indiana has the ball because I think Maryland's going to be able to put up points. Can Indiana put up points? I don't think so. We'll pull up the webpage just to make sure that you guys can see everything there. Uh, When I look at this, I don't see where the advantage is. Because the one thing that that Maryland is bad at is number 117 in rushing success rate allowed, but Indiana is number 132. They, they only have successful rushes on 28% of their attempts. Like, that's not great. Uh, you look at points per play margin, turnover margin, penalties per game. Uh, the, the, here's, here's the deal. The five factors plus talent rank, Maryland is number 22, Indiana is number 76. That kind of tells you everything you need to know here. Uh, Why this spread is only 14, I have no idea. I'm going to take Maryland minus the 14 on this because I don't think Indiana is that good. Now, Indiana has hung around with Maryland in a few games here and there, uh, but this, 
this doesn't seem like the spot. It seems like Maryland should be able to do whatever they want to on offense, and I, uh, I expect them to do so. Next on the board, the Donovan Smith Bowl. Houston heads to Texas Tech, and let me tell you, let me tell you, uh, I think Donovan Smith is going to be fired up for this. Texas Tech is an eight and a half point favorite, total of 50 and a half. It's 2.30 p.m. on FS2. Two, that's right. Okay, here's the numbers. My numbers are the complete opposite side of this. Houston, minus 8.93 I have. It's completely flipped. I got wrong team favored here. Houston ain't great. Number 118 PPA margin. And Texas Tech is number 61. Um, this is what it looks like when you take uh, when you take Tyler Shuck out, I think. I don't think that the Morton kid is great for Texas Tech. So you look at some of these numbers. Uh, Houston number nine in turnover margin. And you look at uh, uh, Texas Tech, the number fifty-two. Yeah, I'm. I look at points per scoring opportunity, the number of scoring opportunities per game, all this kind of mess. I my numbers really, really like Houston here. It's difficult for me to understand, honestly. Uh, Texas Tech loves to throw the football. Number twenty-five in the country in pass rate. They're throwing it. Over 56% of the time. But they're number 115 in passing success rate, number 118 in PPA per pass. Houston's defense ain't great, but they'll be able to slow that down. PPA per rush, uh, Texas Tech number 32, and Houston number 103. If Texas Tech decides that they want to slow this thing down, then yeah, they could take advantage of that. But they're number 11 in offensive plays per game. Houston is number 17. These two teams are not super efficient, but they will try and run a lot of plays. Eight and a half seems like too many points for me. Yeah, give me Houston. Give me Houston here. Uh, it, it, this is, I don't love it. I don't love that my model likes Houston so much. But, hey, what are you going to do? <laughs> what What are you going to do here? Uh, so, give me, yeah, give me Houston plus eight and a half on that one. Uh, staying in the Big 12 at the exact same time, of course. And, of course, write our times down. Baylor at UCF. UCF, a 13-point favorite, total of 55.5. It's 2.30 p.m. on FS1 on this one. And I guess I could understand that. It would make a little bit of sense. Y'all, Baylor is down so bad right now. Uh, It's, I mean, it's rough. It is very, very difficult. Uh, And they've had a pretty difficult strength of schedule, but, man, they have done absolutely nothing against it. Uh, we are still a little bit away from Blake Shapin coming back at quarterback. UCF, we'll see whether or not John Reese Plumley is going to play this week. Uh, but even still, that offense is just banging right now. Number nine PPA per pass, even though they only throw the ball less than 40% of the time. They're number 10 in passing success rate, number 14 in passing explosiveness. And all of this goes against a defense that is uh, number 115 PPA per drive allowed. On defense. The Baylor defense used to be able to slow teams down. No. And now they don't even have an offense to go with it, right? And we'll pull up on the screen here. Uh, if you want to pause, of course, and take a look at the model, you can do that. When Baylor is on offense, number 77 PPA per pass to number 39 for UCF's defense, where you would think they might have an advantage is UCF's defense is not good against the run. Number 100 PPA per rush allowed. Number 102 uh, rushing success rate allowed. Baylor is number 81 PPA per rush and number 112 in rushing success rate. It's bad. It's really bad. Baylor is number 104 in stuff rate allowed. That offensive line just cannot open holes. They can't figure it out. So, uh, you look at things like the five factors rank down here at the bottom. Yeah, that's uh, that's a massive advantage for UCF. Who would have thought UCF comes into the Big 12 and they would be, I've got them, by over three touchdowns against Baylor. And, and the actual spread is 13. I don't know that we're giving UCF enough credit here, and part of this might be the fact that John Reese Plumley is probably not going to play, uh, or may not play. I'm not going to say probably. But too, too definitive there. But UCF... I mean, this is a good football team. 
They were in that game with Kansas State last week. Uh, had a few things go go hairy, but yeah, I uh, I like UCF to cover here. Give me give me the Knights minus the thirteen. Let me tell you right quick about Ticket Smarter. That's right. You see it on the screen right there. Experience the power and excitement of live events. You feel like getting a ticket to a concert, to a game, to anything else, and there's a bunch of big ones going on this weekend, right? Uh, if you feel like going to the Tennessee Revenge game against South Carolina in Knoxville, it's going to cost you some money to be able to get into that thing. You want to go to the Deep South's oldest rivalry in Atlanta, not Atlanta, excuse me, in Auburn, West Georgia. <laughs> Uh, it's going to cost you a penny to get in there. And here's what you can do. You can use the promo codes that we have for Winning Cures Everything. You can use those as many times as you would like. That's right. It's not a one-time thing with your first order or whatever else. Use the promo code WCE10. It's going to get you $10 off an order of $100 or more. Or if you get one of them real expensive tickets, like going to see Taylor Swift or Tyler Childers or something crazy like that, WCE20, WCE20, it's going to give you $20 off of an uh, off an order of $300 or more. We got some more massive college football games coming up this season. They're going to be expensive to get into. If you want to be there, you want to be live at the ball game, it's going to cost you some money, but you can save some with Ticket Smarter. Think smarter, Ticket Smarter. Use the promo codes. You can find them in the description as well, but go to TicketSmarter.com and make sure that you take advantage of saving a little bit of money on these tickets. All right. Moving right along, and we have got... Missouri, a 13.5-point road favorite at Vanderbilt, and total of 54.5. This one's at 3 p.m. Central Time on the SEC Network, and my numbers are right around there. Right around there. Missouri... Okay, like this is not the biggest spot for them. And Vanderbilt, of course, A.J. Swan is questionable. Their quarterback, that's certainly not going to help you because you're going to need to be able to score to keep up with Missouri here. Uh, I like Missouri. My, my stats have them by 15.75. Power rating has them by 16.6. Uh, number 42 PPA margin, number 124 for Vanderbilt. Uh, and that's, I mean, it's just ridiculous. This Vanderbilt offense just has not been clicking this year. They're number 130 in PPA per rush. Well, you certainly ain't going to be doing any of that on Missouri. They're number 17 PPA per rush allowed, number 9 in rushing success rate allowed. There's just not a whole lot that you can do against that Missouri defense. Now, you might be able to throw the ball on them a little bit. Uh, Vanderbilt, number 101 in PPA per pass. Missouri is number 78 PPA per pass allowed. When Missouri is on offense, yeah, this is where, this is where the game will be won, I believe. Missouri can run the ball. Number 38 rushing success rate. Vanderbilt's defense number 54 in rushing success allowed. Missouri number 83 PPA per rush. Vanderbilt's defense number 96 PPA per rush allowed. And of course, of course, Missouri throwing the ball. Brady Cook to Luther Burden and the rest of uh, Theo Weiss and, and those guys, they got some weapons. Number 23 PPA per pass. Vanderbilt's defense number 97. I expect... I I expect Missouri to be able to score points. I don't know that Vanderbilt can keep up with them, right? And we saw that at the end of the uh, the Kentucky game. Kentucky put 45 on the board against Vanderbilt. You think Eli Drinkwitz is not going to be able to put up points here? I don't think Vandy can keep up here. So while it's 13 and a half, I I fully expect Missouri to be able to win this by more than two touchdowns. So, yeah, give give me the Tigers. Give me the Tigers there. All right. Now, we've got Iowa State headed to Oklahoma. Typically, this one's a a really fun matchup because Matt Campbell, I mean, that was who he took aim at when he got to Iowa State. He had a lot of success against Lincoln Riley and company. Now, it's Brent Venables. And that Oklahoma defense appears to have been fixed a little bit. Oklahoma, a 20-point favorite, total of 48.5. This one's 6 p.m. Central on FS1. And, man, I mean, my numbers are are in love with Oklahoma here. I've got them power rated by over 30 points. Uh, Stats have Oklahoma by 32.19. I mean, this is... This is wild. 
this is absolutely wild. I, I believe, and maybe I'm crazy, but I believe uh, in this Oklahoma team. Now, this is a look-ahead spot, which might have something to do with why the number is below three touchdowns. However, I still believe in what they're doing. Now, this Iowa State defense has been awesome. Absolutely awesome. Number one, uh, 17 in PPA per pass. They're number eight in defensive PPA per drive. Uh, yeah. Okay. That, that's, that'll work. That'll work. Uh, the issue for Iowa State is they're number 108 in offensive PPA per drive. So they can't score. They're number 127 in offensive success rate. That ain't good. Um, and this Oklahoma team is, I think they're going to find ways to score points. Like, they're number two in net points per drive. Iowa State is number six, uh, 64 down here, which eh, you can't see it on the screen yet. But here, I'll just pull up the uh, the full sheet for you to be able to see. Oklahoma's defense, surprisingly good. I mean, they're number seven PPA per drive allowed on defense. So I am a bit shocked, but maybe not. I don't know. I, I think... I think that I really like this Oklahoma team, and I probably shouldn't. And I know that they got Red River next week, so it's a look-ahead spot. But if you're going to let me get Oklahoma at less than three touchdowns against an Iowa State team that cannot score, I mean, look at this. They're number 132 PPA per rush. They are they can be explosive passing the ball, number 63. However, Oklahoma's defense is pretty good at stopping that. Oklahoma number 15 and have it created? I, yeah, this is a mess. This is an absolute mess. They're number two in the overall five factors ranked. They're number one in five factors plus team talent. You start looking at things like turnover margin. Yeah, Oklahoma's better. Points per play margin, Oklahoma way better. Penalties per game, that's a bit of a problem for Oklahoma. Uh, but we're not talking anything crazy. I I think I've got to go with the Sooners here. I, I like what Oklahoma is doing. Um... Uh, I think this is a good team. I think Brent Venables might have figured some stuff out here. And this is this is a perfect spot because they've they've had some issues with Iowa State in the past. So yeah, let's uh let's keep that rolling. I'm I'm good with that. I uh I like Oklahoma here. Moving on, we move to Coastal Carolina at Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern is a six and a half point favorite. A total of 65 on this one. It's a 6 p.m. Central Time game on the NFL Network. That's right. That's right. Ah, uh, those wonderful Sunbelt TV deals. So, my numbers on this. Uh, have Georgia Southern as a slight underdog as far as power ratings by like .3 points. And raw stats, or opponent-adjusted stats, uh, have got Georgia Southern by yeah, about .2 points. So, this is effectively a pick em. I think that this spread is as high as it is because, one, Georgia Southern blew the doors off of Ball State last week as a, as a slight underdog. And Coastal Carolina lost outright at home to Georgia State. Now, here's why I think Coastal Carolina could end up winning this ball game. Uh, if you look at the numbers, this Georgia Southern offense is really good, right? And they throw the ball the fifth most in the country. Uh, They are number 20 in pass success rate. They are number 50 in PPA per pass, right? So they're not super explosive in the passing game, but they're okay, right? Uh, Number 50, PPA per pass. Coastal's defense is number five, but they're number 60 in pass success rate. Uh, You look at the rushing, Georgia Southern does not like to run the ball. Only run it about 35% of the time. And uh, Coastal is, you know, not great at stopping the run. So if Georgia Southern wants to take advantage of this, yeah, there's going to be ways to do that. There's going to be holes there. Uh, On the other side, you know, Coastal not great at running the ball, but that's okay because Coastal Carolina is still good at throwing the ball. Grayson McCall is still okay. Like, he's a good passer. Uh, Number 34 in passing success rate, uh, Yeah, that's a bit of an issue for Georgia Southern, who is number 114 in pass success allowed. And you look at the uh, explosives. I mean, Coastal number 39 in passing explosiveness. Uh, Georgia Southern defense is number 114. 
Uh, Coastal has an advantage in turnover margin. They've got an advantage in penalties per game. Uh, they have a net explosiveness uh, advantage here. I I mean, it, it, you couldn't get closer, right? Coastal is number 38 in net points per drive. Georgia Southern is number 39. Like, Georgia Southern likes to play a little bit faster. Um, but aside from that, I mean, I these two teams, very similar. Coastal's actually played a tougher strength of schedule. Uh, yeah, give me Coastal Carolina plus the six and a half here. I think this is going to come down to the wire. I think these are two teams that were built to be able to compete against each other. Uh, Georgia State just was able to take advantage of all of Coastal's weaknesses, and I don't know that Georgia Southern is built in the same way that Georgia State is. So that's that's the way I'm going on that one. We'll move along. We've got Troy at Georgia State. Uh, Georgia State a one-point favorite here with a total of 50 and a half. And let's see. I've got Georgia State by four points. I've got them power rated by 1.2 roundabout. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Uh, this Troy team is not the same team as they were last season, okay? Uh, the offense, uh, okay, pretty good. Defense, number 25, PPA per drive on defense. But, I mean, they're number 66 in pass success rate allowed. Uh, Georgia State is number 24 in that metric. Uh, you you start looking at uh, the running game, and Georgia State, number 120 in rushing success rate. Uh, Troy, number 27. So Georgia State can take advantage of, you know, some of the things that Troy is not good at. I'll say that. At, at least not what they're best at. On the other side of the ball, yeah, this one's going to be interesting because Troy's offense is still a bit of an issue. Uh, Havoc rate allowed. Troy on offense, number 130. Havoc created. Georgia State is number 52. So that's going to be something interesting to pay attention to. Uh, as far as trying to run the ball, Troy's not doing it a bunch, but a lot of that has to do with the fact that they are so bad at it. Number 114 PPA per rush on offense for Troy. Number 36 PPA per rush allowed on defense for Georgia State. Uh, this is going to be an interesting one. You look at the five factors. I mean, Troy is way, way down. Uh, field position. Here, let's pull it up so that you can actually see down here. Um, field position is Georgia State's in their favor. Turnover margin, Georgia State. Uh, points per play margin, Georgia State. Uh, offensive and defensive red zone conversions, that's all Georgia State. Uh, this is this is interesting because I do think that Troy is a pretty good football team, but, man, just some of the intangibles just don't seem to go their way. So... Yeah, I will. Uh, I think I will take Georgia State. I, I think they've got something cooking there in Atlanta. I'm going to take Georgia State minus the one here. We move on to the SEC. South Carolina heads to Knoxville to take on Tennessee, and the Vols are a uh, they're an eleven and a half point favorite with a total of sixty three at six thirty p.m. Central Time game on the SEC Network, and this is obviously a revenge spot for Tennessee. So, Tennessee lost last year, like sixty-three to thirty, or yeah, sixty-three to thirty-eight, if I'm not mistaken, in Columbia. And this thing was like thirteen or so, and there have been a ton of people betting on South Carolina here. Uh, the the line just kept coming down, kept coming down. Uh, you know, South Carolina had success against them last year. Spencer Rattler's been playing his ass off. Like these, this team looks great. Whatever. I'm I'm t and I know that Tennessee has not looked great by any stretch of the imagination. But if you think that they were not ready for this ball game, I I feel like you got another thing coming. Uh, Tennessee, not super explosive here. Uh, offensive explosiveness, number 91. Defensive explosiveness allowed, number 105. They're number 112 in that explosiveness. South Carolina is number 41. So that's something to pay attention to. Uh, but when you look at the five factors rank, yeah, yeah, that's that's a bit of an issue, right? Tennessee 
has a massive advantage in all of that. Uh, penalties per game, the two are even. Turnover margin, the two are even. I'm curious. Points per play margin certainly leans Tennessee's way. Net points per drive, uh, Tennessee plays faster, you know, plays per game, available yards margin, that's Tennessee's. Um, but at the same time, South Carolina has played Georgia and North Carolina, and they played Mississippi State last week and whatnot. The, the toughest test Tennessee's had was Florida, and they failed it miserably on the road. What you don't like to see for South Carolina is the fact that their pass defense is putrid. Number 114 PPA per pass, number 124 passing success rate allowed, number 124 passing explosiveness allowed. Tennessee has not been that explosive so far this season, like I mentioned, but they will be ready for this one, and Heupel's going to have some stuff drawn up. I think their defense, I think Tennessee's defense, which here we'll pull it back up again, Number five in the country in defensive success rate. I, yeah, that's that's going to be an issue. So, yeah, I will I will certainly ride with Tennessee minus the eleven and a half here. Uh, I think they're just the better football team. And while South Carolina got on them last year, remember the the guys that were calling plays and whatnot for them last year. I don't believe are there anymore, if I'm not mistaken. On top of that, you don't have the same weapons. They got some good weapons in South Carolina. They just don't have the same weapons that they had. So I'm I'm curious on this one. Uh, I do think Tennessee covers the 11 and a half. That's, that's the way I'm going to roll on this one. Moving along, West Virginia. West Virginia heads to TCU. TCU is a 12 and a half point favorite with a total of 52 on it. Uh, it's 7 p.m. Eastern Time, or excuse me, Central Time game on ESPN2. And my number on this says TCU by 8.33. My power number has TCU minus 8.52. Okay, interesting. Uh, not expecting a lot of points here. Of course, I, I said that total is 52. Uh, my projected total is 42. So a lot of, a lot of points there. And this is just a, a stats-based model just ease on into this thing, okay? West Virginia's defense is really, really good. Really, really good. Uh, we'll pull it up here so you can you can pause the screen if you would like to. Um, but West Virginia, number 14, PPA per pass allowed. They are number one in pass success rate allowed. Uh, the spot where TCU might be able to take advantage is the run defense. Number 60 in rushing success rate allowed. Uh, but TCU is number 12 in that metric. As far as PPA per rush, West Virginia does a good job of keeping people out of the end zone. They're number 20. And you look at the strength of schedule, West Virginia, I mean, number 11 in strength of schedule. Uh, the West Virginia offense, not great. Not great by any stretch of the imagination. But if they can find anything in the passing game, uh, they're going to be able to do something against TCU's defense. TCU, not explosive. Number 115 in net explosiveness. Uh, now, while West Virginia is not super explosive on offense, their defense is really good at stopping them. They're number 32 in net explosiveness. So that's something to pay attention to, for sure. Uh, these two teams, pretty much equal when it comes to uh, the five factors rank, right? Uh, I, I look at this, I, I think... I think 12 and a half is just a bit too much. This West Virginia team has surprised me. I'll, I'll admit that. They have surprised me big time. Uh, you've got a good offense against a good defense and a weak offense against a pretty weak defense. Who is going to be able to take advantage? I think that's the question. So, yeah, give me, give me West Virginia here. I like them uh, to cover on the road at TCU on Saturday night. Next one up, Mountain West. That's right. San Diego State heads to Air Force. Air Force, a 10.5 point home favorite, total of 43.5. This 7 p.m. Central Time game on CBS Sports Network. And let's see what I've got. My numbers love Air Force. Power number has them by 15.4. Uh, my, I mean, my model number has them by. Uh, 17.87. So, San Diego State has not been great this year. 
And typically this defense is what saves this team, but they are number 110 in defensive PPA per drive. That's not good. Air Force is, I mean, this is a juggernaut team. This team is fantastic. And while I think it had been like eight straight games that Air Force had failed to cover against San Diego State before last season, uh, this go-round, yeah, I think, I think I'm going to have to go the other direction on this. I'm going to have to ride Air Force. You know what Air Force does best. They run the football. Number 13 in PPA per rush. San Diego State's number 122 on defense. Number 18 in rushing success rate. San Diego State is number 132 in the country. Yeah, there's only 133 teams. This is terrible. Uh, San Diego State is, is pretty good at stopping rushing explosiveness, but that's likely because teams can pick up 5 to 10 yards a carry. I mean, it is, it's bad in San Diego right now with that defense. Kurt Maddox, I have believed in him a lot, but whew, that's, I mean, these are, these are rough numbers. Um, I mean, the, the craziest one is the, the stuff rate. Uh, San Diego State's defense, number 120 in stuff rate. Air Force's offense, number one in stuff rate allowed. Air Force does not miss blocks. They are going to block you, and they are going to get yardage. Uh, number six in offensive line yards for the Falcons, San Diego State, number 128. Now, on the other side of the field, if San Diego State can get something going in their running game, like, maybe they can hang around, maybe. Uh, but, man, just everything, all the fundamentals, everything that goes into the five factors, uh, it all points towards Air Force here. Uh, but you look at you look at the rushing game for San Diego State, that's what they seem to be best at, number 57 in rushing success rate. Air Force's defense is number 68. Uh, they're number 77 in PPA per rush. Well, Air Force's defense is number 73. I mean, even the best scoring plays that San Diego State has, they're number 65 in PPA per pass. Air Force's defense is number 23 in that metric. Like, there's just, there's nothing that you can hang your hat on. Turnover margin, penalties per game, uh, points per play, like, anything. There's nothing you can point to that would lead you to San Diego State here. So, I am going to take the bait. I'm going to take Air Force, and uh, and I'll pull this up, so if you want to screenshot it or whatever, you want to pause the video, you can do that. Um, but yeah, this is this San Diego State team is interesting, and I think the line is so low because of uh, the fact that San Diego State covered for so many years against Air Force. They just had a defense that was capable of stopping that triple, and now it does not appear that they are set up for that at all. At all. Moving over to the SEC. And we only got three more games, so let's get to it. Uh, moving over to the SEC. Alabama is a 14.5-point road favorite in Stark Vegas against Mississippi State. And the total is 47 on this. 8 p.m. Central Time kick on ESPN, so this is a late ball game. And my numbers like Mississippi State, actually. Uh, Alabama... Favored by 12.85, according to my numbers. And power rating has Alabama by 13.687. So, yeah, around 13 and a half, or 13.7 points. Around 14 points somewhere. Uh, but it's 14 and a half. You start looking at numbers. Alabama's offense is just atrocious. Number 90 in PPA per pass. Uh, they're number 55 in passing success rate. And I say that that's atrocious. It's just atrocious to what they have been, right? Mississippi State's defense, they lost a lot of guys in that secondary. And man, number 125 PPA per pass allowed, number 127 passing success rate allowed, number 127 passing explosiveness. That's going to be an issue. I mean, that is absolutely going to be an issue uh, because Alabama, Parker called it this. Alabama is doing the dink and bomb offense. So, a lot of short passes, try and find guys in space, and they'll run the ball a lot, and then they will go deep on you. They will try and draw those safeties up into the box, and then they will stretch the field. And that's all they got. There's no intermediate game to speak of with this team. They are not capable of doing it. I am going to reluctantly go against my numbers here, and I'm going to take Alabama. 
to cover the 12, or excuse me, cover the 14 and a half. Uh, I know it's more than two touchdowns, but Alabama routinely stomps this team. Uh, if you look, and pull it back up here. There we go. If you look at Alabama's defensive numbers, number 34 PPA per pass, they are number 13 in passing success rate allowed. PPA per rush, they're number 57 allowed. They're number 23 in rushing success rate allowed. Average field position is good. Uh, they don't allow a lot of scoring opportunities per game. They don't allow a lot of points per scoring opportunities, so you can't finish drives on them. Yeah, this looks like a, a spot where Alabama will be able to come out ahead. Uh, they are way, way up there in the five factors, uh, which we'll pull it up there so you can see. But yeah, it, most everything points towards Alabama. I know they had not been great thus far. Give me, give me the tide. Minus 14 and a half here. Give me the tide. All right, two more. We move over to the Pac-12 for one of the late night games. Washington heads to Arizona as a 19-point road favorite. Total of 67 and a half here. It's a 9 p.m. Central Time kick on the Pac-12 network. So, if y'all got websites, send them to me. Because I would like to watch this. I want to see Michael Penix. Uh, Jaden DeLora, quarterback for Arizona. He is a game-time decision. Uh, curious what that's going to mean. I would imagine this line is about to just skyrocket because uh, that news came out just a bit before I started recording. And, and yeah, some of the books have now pulled. Either way, it was 19 just a bit ago, so we're going to use 19 for the show, right? That's the way it's going to go. Um, we'll talk about it, though. We'll, we'll pull up the numbers. We'll see, we'll see what we got. My number's like Washington by 23.47. That was even with Delora, right? Um, Washington, number one in PPA margin this year. Number 18, defensive PPA per drive allowed. Number nine on offense. Arizona is actually pretty good. Number 17 in PPA margin. They're number seven in offensive success rate. Uh, the issue is going to be defense. But let, let's start with Arizona having the ball, okay? They... Don't run the ball a ton, but they are pretty good at it. Number three in rushing success rate, number 18 in PPA per rush. They are number 37 in PPA per rush, or excuse me, PPA per pass. They are number eight in passing success rate. The problem is Washington's defense thus far has been really good, and both of these teams have played just crap schedules. Arizona number 103 in strength of schedule, Washington number 94. Um... You look at this, and this Washington defense, number nine, PPA per pass. We're going to pull it up so you can you can pause the video and just look at the numbers if you would like to. Uh, but Washington, number nine, PPA per pass. Number 12, passing success rate allowed. As far as rushing defense, number 92, PPA per rush. Number 39, rushing success rate allowed. Uh, neither of these offenses, or I say neither, um, Arizona's offense is not super explosive, but they don't have to be because they're they're efficient enough to get down the field. You look at scoring opportunities per game, 6.75. They they have almost seven drives per game that get inside the opponent's 40. That's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Uh, however, less than four points per scoring opportunity. So they don't always finish those drives. I will say that. Then you move over to the other side. Yeah, Washington, number three, PPA per pass, number one, passing success rate. Number three, PPA per rush, number one, rushing success rate. As much as Arizona's defense has improved from a just raw number standpoint, uh, there is no way that I could side with Arizona here. Uh, turnover margin, that's a big one. Obviously, you guys know what's going on there. Um, number 31 in giveaways per game for Washington. Arizona can't take the ball away. They're number 112 in takeaways per game. Arizona, number 107 in giveaways per game. Washington, number 37 in takeaways. Yeah, that's going to be an issue. Uh, I I like... Both of these teams are the same level of explosive, right? Washington, number 75 net explosiveness. Uh, Arizona, number 78 in net explosiveness. I am going to take Washington. And I think I like this up to three touchdowns. Okay, so it's 19 on the show, and we're, we'll are we use the 19 to grade that because, in all honesty, I've already got a bet in on it. Um, but yeah, I'll take Washington minus the 19 
on the road. Arizona has looked better. This Washington team is CFP good. They are so good right now. So I, I like the Huskies minus 19 on the road. Uh, Nevada at Fresno State. We'll write down our time here. There we go. All right. The Nevada Wolfpack at Fresno State. And I changed it up. I've, I've always said Nevada. Man, you guys have been on me. So Nevada. How's that sound? Is that a little better? Um, Fresno State, a 25-point home favorite. Total of 51. 51. It's 9.30 p.m. kick on FS1. 9.30 p.m. Central Time there. Let's pull up the numbers. Let's go on and take a look at this. Uh, I don't imagine we'll spend too terribly long on it, but it's here in case uh, you would like to see it. The numbers are not good for Nevada. However, my power number has Fresno by 25. Uh, my projected spread, just on numbers, has Fresno State by 25. And imagine that. The spread is 25. So, Fresno has a massive advantage when they are on offense. At least throwing the ball. Uh, they're not good at running the ball, but it's not like the Wolfpack can stop that either. Uh, they're better with field position. They're better with net points per drive. They're better, all that good stuff. Um, this this Wolfpack team ain't great. But I will tell you, uh, penalties per game, they don't commit a lot of them. They don't beat themselves. They do give the ball away a lot. Fresno is number three in the country in turnover margin, number five in giveaways per game, number seven in takeaways per game. Uh, Nevada is number 92 in giveaways per game, number 56 in takeaways. This is, and we'll pull it up so you can pause it if you would like, but this is just, everything points Fresno, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to take the Wolfpack plus the 25. And I know they're on the road, and I know that this sounds ridiculous, but they have played pretty well the last two weeks. They covered against Texas State. They covered against Kansas. I mean, they were in a game with Kansas. Uh, I think Fresno, even at home, I think they might have some, not, not issues, but just might have some trouble getting margin. That's that's what I'm going to guess here. And so if if Nevada can can limit the plays, and they can run the ball at least a little bit. Which the issue is that what they're best at on offense is running the ball. They're number 80 in rushing success rate, which is way better than uh, number 84 in passing success rate. They're number 86 in PPA per rush, number 112 in PPA per pass. Yeah, Fresno's defense is, is really good at both of those. So I'm going to take Nevada plus the 25. Uh the numbers don't lean a certain way. Uh, I mean, maybe if you wanted to take Fresno, I guess it would make sense. Minus 25.23 is certainly over 25, which is what the spread is. But regardless, that's the way it goes. That is the way it goes. All right, so let's do our recap. Let's go on and knock this bad boy out. Recap for the show. I'm going to take Penn State minus 27. I think you can get a 26 and a half now. I think it moves since we, uh, since we did the show. Arkansas plus six and a half against Texas A&M. Louisiana plus 11 against Minnesota. I like UAB plus 21 and a half at Tulane. I will take South Alabama plus, uh, plus three at James Madison. I'll take Boston College to cover the three at home against Virginia. Michigan minus 17 at Nebraska. Uh, Maryland minus 14 at home against Indiana. I will take Houston plus eight and a half on the road. Uh, give me UCF minus 13 at home against Baylor. I'll take Missouri, minus 13.5 on the road at Vanderbilt. Uh, Iowa State and Oklahoma, Look, this is a look-ahead spot. Oklahoma, again, not been great in the week leading up to Red River. I think this is a different kind of unit, and that Iowa State offense is terrible. So Oklahoma, minus 20 on that one. I'll take Coastal Carolina, plus 6.5 at Georgia Southern. I like Georgia State, plus 1. Uh, excuse me, Georgia State, minus 1 at home against Troy. I'll take Tennessee, minus 11.5 at home against South Carolina. I like West Virginia to cover 12.5 at TCU. I like Air Force minus 10.5 uh, at home against San Diego State. Give me Alabama to cover 14.5 on the road in Starkville. Washington minus 19 at Arizona. And Nevada plus 25 on the road at Fresno State. Ah, oh, what a show. What a week. 
I'm tired. I'm on like six hours of sleep in the last couple of nights. So if I missed anything or I misspoke, I apologize. So uh, with that said, let's go and get out of here. Check out Three Dog Thursday right here on the Winning Cures Everything channel. Share out the show. Make sure and like the video. Subscribe to the channel. We're trying to get to 10,000 uh, this football season. That would help. And, uh, of course, the Bet U.S. College Football Show. That would be every uh, Tuesday and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. So check that bad boy out. Uh, th- th- uh, what else? Oh, Ticket Smarter. Ticket Smarter. Winning Cures Everything. WCE 10 for $10 off an order of $100 or more. Or WCE 20 for an order or for $20 off of an order of $300 or more. Uh, think Smarter. Ticket Smarter. Those codes you can use anytime. There is no limit. It's not for a first-time user. It's not for a first-time sign-up, anything like that. You can use it as much as you want. So make sure to take advantage. Ticket smarter, think smarter, ticket smarter. All right. Now let's get out of here. You guys share it out. Tell your friends about it. All that good stuff. Oh, it's exhausting. It's exhausting doing a show by yourself, my friends. (laughs) All right. uh, Again, I can't. Thank you enough. Uh, give me a follow on socials, all the good stuff. All of it's down in the description. I'm not going to read it off again. Uh, let me just say this. I hope you all have wonderful weekends. Okay? Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. God bless college football. And, hey, uh, hopefully all of your tickets cash this weekend. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me, Gary, at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.